Peter Wong, the CEO of HSBC across yeah. the Asia Pacific, joins us this morning. So I guess we'll start with the results then. Uh, up $11.5 billion. We made $11.5 billion yeah. in those six months with Asia, and uh, including Hong Kong, of course, accounting for 60% of mm -hmm. the revenue. Can you keep that up for the rest of this year? Well, we'll try to. Yeah. Uh, and the, at this point in time, we see that the, uh, the market in Asia Pacific, uh, the GDP is still going to go up to 7.5% uh, in Japan. So there will be opportunities, but we will be a little bit more cautious because of what's happening in the United States, uh, in Europe, and in the Middle East. So the world is kind of uncertain, and so we are saying, okay, can Asia continue to grow independent of what's happening around the, the rest of the world? So we'll be a little bit more cautious. You're withdrawing from, I think, 20 markets. Any of them going to be in this part of the world, or is it all going to be in some of those other ones in Europe? I think we've got Poland and Russia. You're also selling off half the business mm -hmm. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Actually, what we will do is that we will follow the five filters for every country. And so as far as Asia Pacific is concerned, there will be some countries that will be impacted. But on the whole, actually, we will increase our headcounts. Overall, that's going to happen, is it? Well, actually, in, 2000, in the first half of 2011 versus 2000 and first half of 2010, we've increased 5,100 headcounts. And the, uh, going forward, you know, we will follow the five filters and the... Uh, Wait. I just want to be specific on that. So you've hired 5,100 individuals so far this year, 2011. Is that 2011 right? versus first half of 2010. Oh, versus first half of 2010. Are you done hiring for the year? No, no. We're still expanding. Uh -huh. China is expanding and uh, so is India and some and the Asia Pacific markets. And also at the same time because the talent is so rare to come by these days. Yes. And, uh, and therefore, you know, it's, uh, there will be a war for talent. Well, but that's uh, where mm. most of the cost came from because you're trying to keep talent. A lot of these wage increases, yep. uh, you know, when you try to get the best talent, you have to pay out. So we're looking at a 52% increase in terms of costs, at least, uh, for this part of the region. Can you keep doling out that sort of, those sort of contracts like, if you want to keep costs down? I think that's the reason why we need to eliminate bureaucracy at the, at the back end. At the front end, we'll need to continue to hire so that we can do more business. And eliminating the bureaucracy at the back end will allow us to be more efficient. Peter, I mean, does this represent an absolute sea change in HSBC strategy? I mean, you know, your new boss there, CEO Stuart Gulliver, comes from an investment banking background and his predecessor was more retail orientated. So is this an inflection point? Is this bank going to be changing the shape it is in? over the course of the next two years and be quite radically different? No, I think that the uh, uh, steward recognizes that, you know, uh, the strength of the bank is about international connectivity. Uh, but you can't be the world's local bank if you're, not, you're getting out of 20 markets. Well, we, as a matter of fact, the world local bank has a bit of an um, anomaly in the sense that, you know, it's kind of like saying that it's a, low, it's, a, it's a retail bank, but it's not a retail bank, HSBC. HSBC started off as a trade bank. So international connectivity is our strength, and we're present in 87 countries around the world, and we capture 93% of the world trade flows. Yeah, it's called Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation. Mm. It has its roots here That's in the right. Asia Pacific. But I wanted to pick up on the investment banking mm. side. As you said, Stuart, it does come from uh, IB, but uh, what? Uh, looking at the numbers, IB, uh, the IB arm itself suffered a 12% fall in profits mm. in the first half. How about Asia? Did it come out better than what the numbers we saw? Yeah, the actually, the global banking and markets in Asia went up by about 11% uh, in total. Uh, so there will be, there are some, uh, some uh, we are taking a bit of a drop in uh, balance sheet management, but, you know, we are pretty good in uh, ECM or, or equities and, uh, and bonds and so forth, and we make up some of the losses. So the bank, is it, what I'm trying to get out of you, Peter, is, you know, is it shifting and balancing itself towards investment banking over retail? No, I don't think so. I think it's balancing to watch that we are a commercial bank. We are a trade bank, and we want to cap capitalize on the capital flows around the world. What we're trying to do, you know, as far as investment banks is concerned, uh, the traditional investment banks would be saying, well, I'm going to buy a building and I'm going to hold it until it appreciates and then sell it. But as far as our invest investment bank is concerned, we try to help the customers. You know, we actually bank our, bank our corporate customers more than anything else. Well, I'll try to pick up on what you mm. asked, Rich, because I think, um, correct me if I'm wrong, you're trying to ask where the hiring might be coming from. Yeah, exactly. Is it uh, going to be on the investment banking side? Is it going to be on the retail side? I mean, where are you looking to add headcount right now? It gives the shape of what HSBC well, is Well, I think be. on the retail side, we will continue to hire in the markets where we think that there is a, a good proposition for us. And on the investment banking side, in Hong Kong and in China, we're going to build out the uh, equity, uh, build the equity uh, uh, proposition 
Uh, we will be hiring a little bit more on the uh, on the uh, investment banking side because we want to capture more IPOs from from mainland China, and we did that in the first half of this year. Yeah, Gulliver, Mr. Stewart Gulliver, is saying that he has plans to hire 3,000 yeah. to 5,000 staff a year in Asia mm. and emerging markets. Is it safe to say that most of the hiring will be done here in the Asia Pac? Well, I can say that it will be one of the areas. I think that you know Brazil, you know uh, Latin America is also growing. I think some point in time the uh, the U.S. and also Europe will be will be growing again. So at this point in time, Asia is is uh, booming ahead, and so the hiring will be here. All right, you uh, pleased with the uh, share price performance so far? <laughs> If it's higher, I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you have had stakes in it, right? Okay, yeah. China. Now, uh, Peter, let's talk about uh, Asia Pacific and the business here because we have profits from Asia, excluding Hong Kong, jumping 40% on the back of double digit lending and also mm -hmm. deposit growth. Yeah. We're talking about these concerns in banking in yeah. China. You know, there's doling uh, too much credit. Are we going to see a crash from the property sector hitting the banks? Mm -hmm. You know, from what HSBC has experienced, uh, what's your take on the banking sector right now? I think that the, uh, as far as China is concerned, I think it's going to have a soft, soft landing uh, because the regulator is, uh, is actually taking care of the market pretty well. We've in, uh, increased the reserve ratio requirement nine times since uh, uh, October 2010 and also interest rate five times and also uh, restricting lending. So the uh, inflation is coming down and the property prices actually at the beginning of the year it increases like about 0.8 percent per month. Mm -hmm. Now it's actually only increasing by about 0.1 percent. Okay. So, so credit growth has slowed a bit. Yes, that's correct. And we're in for a soft landing yeah. in China. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me ask you about Hong Kong because obviously HSBC is the largest mortgage provider mm. in the city and we, we've seen rates go up. Mm. Not, not following the interest rates set mm. by the monetary authority or by the U.S. but because you know, basically HSBC has to tighten up in terms of how much credit you're yeah. lending out. Yeah. Is there a slowdown so far in the amount of people seeking yeah. mortgages in Hong There's Kong? There's a slight slowdown yeah. because of the uh, loan to value ratio has been lowered uh, and uh, we are complying with the, uh, with the, uh, with the HKMA. And I think that the, uh, but however, I think the demand structure has changed mm -hmm. because Hong Kong is an ideal place for Chinese uh, to come to Hong Kong and, and the R&D continues to appreciate. Oh, yes, you're talking about that because, uh, you know, in terms of people wanting to look for homes, it, it might not come down in terms of prices despite the fact that mortgage rates have gone up in mm -hmm. the city, right? Yeah, I think that the prices will stabilize. At most, it will drop like by about 10%. I think that will be it. And I don't think that it's going to have a big drop. Okay, well, that's the view from HSBC on the Hong Kong market, which is one of the most expensive property markets in the world. I know you keep being asked about this, but you said, I think, recently that HSBC is 100% ready to be listed on the Shanghai Stock Exchange. Yes. What's keeping things up? I mean, we've been talking about this for two years now, yeah. two, two and a half years, yeah. and we still don't have any confirmation as to when this Well, is I think happen. the most important is to wait for the regulations to come out. And I think at this point in time, we looked at the Chinese market, the Asian market. It's not doing very well. Uh, and there are a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, other companies, banks, are trying to uh, get capital from the market. So I think that the, at this point in time, we're just waiting for the regulations to come out. Mm -hmm. Waiting for the regulations. And how much longer? I have to ask you this each and every time because it has been two and a half years. Uh, I have no idea. Okay. But you, do you know what's holding things up? How about that? I think it's the, uh, the uh, sentiment in the market as mm -hmm. well as the number of uh, companies wanting to raise funds in the market. Okay, so maybe there's just been an overabundance of yeah. listings in the market and that's been draining liquidity. All right, well, let me ask you then about going forward with uh, HSBC. Uh, you know, we talked about hiring, we talked about uh, basically profits from this region, uh, you know, expenses as well. Uh, what's the future like for HSBC, especially when we talk about Stuart Gulliver, the CEO? He doesn't want to move to Hong Kong like Michael Gagan did. Is that going to change at any point? No, no. Uh, Stuart is actually here quite often. Yeah. He's actually at least a, a week, a month. Uh, he is in Hong Kong. And uh, HSBC going forward, I think that you know, what we have done is actually is ex uh, Stuart is changing the culture. In the past, when we have, let's say, an expense issue, We'll probably say, well, we'll deal with it. But uh, Stuart is taking a different stance. He'll say, uh, he's saying that, well, we're going to deal with it. We're going to tell the market how we will deal with it. And by the next strategy day, uh, what we will do is that we will show our results so that the market can judge us. So it's a very different, uh, it's a very different approach. Okay. Well, one more question for you because we talked about how HSBC is cutting down on the business in the U.S., in Europe, and we're focusing more you know, in emerging markets such as the uh, Asia PAC. Is this the future of banking to you? This is where it's going to lie? 
I, I think that in the next couple of years, uh, probably so, because I think that the U.S. will recover uh, in the future. Uh, and as, I think the U.S. will continue to have a loose money policy as long as the unemployment rates remain high. I think that Europe will take some time to recover, but I think in the next couple of years it will, it will be Asia and Latin America. All right. Peter, thanks for dropping by. Always good to see you. That's uh, Peter Wong, HSBC's Asia-Pacific CEO.